everyone hope all of you are doing great so finally we are starting with authentication section and this is one of the most important sections for any api and backend development okay so you know that you have to have a good authentication model where you have to keep the focus on the security part the user login the stake data all the things we have to do okay and that's all we're going to do right in this video so this is what is going to be pretty fun because when i learned this for the very first time I got very delighted and I got very excited because that was really amazing okay so I'll try my best to explain you as brief as as I can about the authentication section because this is going to be pretty important things in the backend development okay so here you can see here I have opened my API folder so we have divide we have already covered the two part in the first part we have built the API entire model in the second part API part 2 error in that we have covered the entire global error handling model and now we're going to create the third part in which we're going to call the authentication section so okay you know the drill what I'm going to do I'm going to simply copy this folder so we can make the things separate so if we commit any kind of error we can always go back and simply replicate and start working from fresh okay so i don't want to create any mess here so just wait here finally we have done the copy and now let me rename this and i'm going to call this let's say hmm, api part three and it will call auth okay so in this we're going to talk about the authentication section let me open to my visual code studio okay and here we are okay so let me close this one and let's have a look what we have so far so this is the controller in that we have all this error controller nft controller user controller so we have done with this now we have this model so right now we have created one model for our nft details now we have some demo data okay in that and here we have the routers for the user and the nft here we have utility inside the utility we have all this function okay so now what i want to do is we are working on a user model okay so we want to take certain information from the user so they can create the account into our api so we want their name we want their password we need want their email id okay so these are the stuff we need so let's create a model for that because that's what we can do we can define all the things in the model the data we want to take from the user okay so let's come in the model folder and in that we have to create a file we'll call it let's say user model js okay and we have to follow the same structure which we have followed in our nft nft model okay so that's the same thing we're going to do here so i hope you guys haven't forgot what we have covered in our nft model okay so let's open this one and you can see here we are this using this mongoose schema we are using these packages and this is how we have built our entire nft model okay it's pretty huge so if you haven't watched this make sure to watch that will give you a better idea okay so that's the schema models we have defined here let's come back to the model and let's start working on it okay so first thing we have to import the mongoose because we need mongoose to create our schema model and now we have to create a field okay we need to create name photo password and password confirm okay so here i will just want you to give a try okay if you guys have already watched the nft model schema which we have designed so this will not create any problem for you so i just want you to give a try okay just try from yourself try to design the model in which you can take this define this three sorry in this five field okay so try to create the model following the same thing which we have followed in our nft model okay so i just pause the video for a while but in a while i will start continuing building this model okay so i believe that you guys have give a try at least if you haven't succeed no problem i will explain you everything and we're going to build this entire model together okay so let's continue so here we have that let's define the variable user schema we're going to use this new model and here we're going to define the entire data which we want from the user okay so we want the name and it's going to be a type let's say string and we want to make it required so they have to provide the name and here we have to pass the error message please tell us your name now that's the one field now we have to take the email ids as well so it's going to be a type string and it's going to be a required field here we have to pass our message okay please provide your email now we have to make it unique because every email id should be unique because we're going to do on the base of email so we don't want that two users can have the same email okay so we want email should be unique so there is a lot of things you can do okay but i just try to keep things simple okay there's a lot of things you can do so we'll say true and here i'm going to convert the entire string into a lowercase okay so that's the practice you have to follow just like this if someone's tried to type dollar hussein in the capital so this will turn to this okay so that's how it will work so that's the entire email model we have so that looks pretty good if we come here you can see 
we have the they have this validator so right now in the nft model we are not using that validator okay but in the email section in the user model we have to use this validator okay because we have to validate the emails which users are providing okay otherwise they can type anything okay so here we're going to use that package simply close this one and first thing we have to import that validator again if you're watching this video for right from here it will not make sense so make sure to follow the entire playlist where i have explained everything okay so we have the validator now let's come down and here we're going to call the validator validate and here we're going to simply call the function so in this validator we have this method okay is email so this will check that whether the email uh, the user have provided is valid or not and then we can simply pass the error message please provide a valid email address okay so that's the second field we have now we have to take the third field which is a photo and we can say that type is going to be string okay it's because we are only storing the name in our database we are not storing the entire in image in our database you can but this is not what we are following in this entire API okay so we are just storing the name of that so this is the one way you can define or you can simply define in this way okay so you can see here in our nft model so this is how we have defined so here we have taken this image cover which is a type string and it's a required because they have to provide the image for the nft okay but here in our user model we are trying to make it optional we don't want to make it required so if the user wants to provide the image they can otherwise it's not required okay so you can do in simple way okay so what i want i can simply remove it and i want to remove this as well simply copy and paste here this will work fine okay this will work in the same way so i just leave it like this okay now this is the photo now let's create the for password so here we have to check that password it should be like type is going to be like a string you can do crazy thing with the password like uh, here i'm just checking for the number okay string and we have to make it required so they have to provide the password it's true and they, we can say please provide a password and here we have to send the minimum length okay so i want that the password should be minimum at least eight character you can add different type of rules in that that user should provide the password like alphabet or number or symbol you can add different type of crazy crazy validation process but i just try to keep it simple because most of the time the longest the password is more secure no matter how many type of characters or symbols you are adding so if the password is longest it is more secure okay so i'll just check for the length so eight and now let's create the password confirm because we have to match that whatever password the user have provided we have to confirm that as well so let's create that and here we have to say type is going to be a string and it should be required true and we can simply they confirm password okay so that's the simple of our model okay so we have covered the name we have covered the email we have covered the photo we have covered the password and confirm password so that's the entire schema model we're going to add a lot of property in that but just time for we are going with a simple one okay so this looks pretty good to me okay now we have to build the schema so it looks pretty decent to me so we have all these variables in place now let's come here let's build the schema so const user same logic i'm following what we have followed in our nft model so make sure you have to keep that thing in mind and we're going to call this mongoose model and in that we have to pass the username okay this is the general convention that you should give the upper upper application okay so we have to find our user and user and in this we pass the schema model okay so that's what we have and now we have to simply export this okay model export user so that looks pretty fine to me everything's looking fine perfect hope these things are making sense to all of you guys if it's still confusing make sure to rewatch that that will give you an idea okay so that looks pretty good now what we can do let's come up here and that looks pretty fine to me we are not missing anything let's come back to here and go back to the controller and here we can create a one more file because this is the model we have designed the data we want to take from the user at a time of creating account okay but the actual verifications actual authentication we're going to do into our controller okay so we're going to create a separate file auth controller and here in this file in this file we have to build all the logic that whether the user is connected or logging or not whether he has access to certain information or not okay so that's all the logic we're going to build inside this authentication section okay and that's why i put this into a auth controller so some of the developer they create a debate that this is not the right place to 
to structure the auth controller okay so there is a multiple way but this is the architecture mvc architecture i'm following here if you want to come up with your own you can do but this is where i'm going to do all the authentication work okay so make sure to create a folder and so that's the only thing i want to explain about the entire model schema model for our user okay i don't want to extend this video so we're going to build that authentication function in the next video so let's move for that